Welcome back guys to Kerbal Space Explosion. So we've got the Fission 5 lander into orbit around Kerbin and Sidwise, Hadbury, Seaford, Lurie, and Jeanwig, they're ready to get on with it and head out for the moon. So here's the moon, let's set it as the target. And our ascending descending node is about 1.2 degrees. I may try to fix that when we do our maneuver, so it's a little bit less. It probably doesn't really matter, though. Uh, from past experience, if the moon is here, I think we're going to encounter it somewhere in that area right there. Let's expand this out. Zoop, zoop. So this maneuver right now takes like a minute 35. And when I only had the one nuclear engine on an earlier version, there we go. On, yeah, that's pretty good. 250,000. Whoa, look at that. I wonder if we can fix that. When I only had the uh, the one nuclear engine, the the burn to maneuver out to uh, the moon, it was like eight minutes. And I couldn't do it efficiently in one pass, and it was just a mess. It needed to be fixed. Let's see, is this helping at all? Oh, yes, kind of. Oh, you know what? You know what I'll do. Uh, okay, let's not do this. Let's approach the moon normally, and then once we burn retrograde to get into orbit around the moon, we'll set up an orbit then that is more uh, circularized. Actually, the um, it doesn't need to be an equatorial orbit around the moon because we're going to be going all over the place, landing these landers in a variety of different locations. They're all going to different places. So actually, yeah, it doesn't really matter. It does not matter. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Let's get over to our mark. Yeah, these guys are freaking out. <laughs> They're freaking out. Let's speed up. Down to what, like 45 seconds-ish? I'm not sure if we're gonna have less power or more power once we get rid of this tank. Um, so maybe I'll just start a few seconds early just in case. Speed up. Oh, we can't go any faster. All right, never mind. Never mind. We are blazing around. T minus nine, eight, seven, six, five. We're close to our target. Uh, we're right next to it. So we don't have to be. Okay, uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Keep burning that time. A little bit more. Keep going. Let's go down to about 55, right there. Okay, let's get back on target. And let's start the burn. There we go. This engine, the uh, the skipper, it's got a nice gimbling radius. So we can control it. We have, we have a lot of uh, torque with five different control modules as well. So this stage is pretty easy to control. And uh, once we get rid of it, the next stage will be even easier to control. Even though these engines, I don't think they provide any any uh, gimbling torque. But we have a lot of control modules for the amount of mass we're going to have. It's expanding nicely. Yeah, we're going to lose this, and then we'll just have five nuclear engines. But five of them, I think they provide six. 60... 60 power per engine times 5, 300 power. These provide 650. There's that. Shaboom! But we, yeah, we just lost a lot of mass with that empty tank and the uh, the skipper dropping off. And yeah, okay, so it did extend our burn by quite a bit, but we have a lot of fuel, so I don't care. It's fine. We don't have to be totally precise. And look at this guy. This guy does look pretty cool. I have to say, I like the overall design of this rocket ship. It kind of looked like, a little bit like a Christmas tree uh, <laughs> at the beginning phase when it was on the launch platform before we lost the 13 skippers on the bottom. Expanding out nicely. Got about another minute for this burn. And if I, if I had to do an eight minute burn, there's no way I would sit there and make you watch the whole eight minute burn. Only a a cruel sociopath would do such a thing in a YouTube video as to make you watch uh, such a long thing. That's just, uh, it's not very nice. And I don't know why anyone would ever do that to you. <laughs> a reference. 
Ah, but but a two minute burn, a two minute burn is perfectly acceptable to make you watch the whole thing. Besides, this is the most uh, exciting part of it, right? Firing these huge engines as we burn out of the orbit around the planet. This is the most cinematic part when we're close to one of these celestial bodies. And we're just gonna fast forward this part until we get close to the moon. Maybe we should turn the UI off even. Now we have no idea what's going on. I wonder, has anyone ever tried to do a complete mission like this with the UI off, where you can't see how full your fuel tanks are? Can you, yeah, the pop-up does not show. You can't see how full they are. Um, you can't see your maneuver. You can't see any, th oh, I guess we can see that. Yeah, that would be interesting to play without the, the UI at all. See if you could land on the moon. Get on it. <laughs> Scott Manley. That sounds like a challenge. Okay. Let's let's uh, watch this version now. So, boom. Stop. Oh, we went a little too far. Let's see. What did we do? Yeah, we went a little bit too far, I think. Or no. We can keep going, right? To the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Periapsis. That's... We want to... I guess we'll just burn until we get to the other side. We got lots of fuel, why not? I could turn around and burn retrograde. Is this doing what I want it to do, or are we going the other direction? I can't really see where the periapsis is for the encounter. I wish you could see that from here. Moon encounter. And then we do something crazy. Yeah, let's just burn retrograde to fix this. I think I screwed it up a little bit. And we can... Let's kill off the maneuver because it looks like we're going to fly right into it we may shoot off but yeah i can't really tell until we get way out there what our actual periaps is okay we uh, we have lots of fuel as i've mentioned previously so we can fiddle with things oh, oh stop stop Oh, now we went too far. Wow, that's quite finicky right there. All right, let's spin around and do even more. And uh, I was trying to get my periaps to be right at 100,000 from this one maneuver, but maybe it's not quite possible to do it in one step from whatever our current position is, or I just don't know enough about science and rocket technology to do it. So we will, uh, we'll just get back into an encounter and we'll fiddle with it once we get out there. I just didn't want to, like, ex fly right into the, the moon itself, which looked like it, it might happen, just the way that diagram looked. There. Periapsis, 50 kilometers. I wanted to be a little higher, and that's getting lower. Okay, stop. Fine. That's where we're going. I actually wanted to be up around 100, but uh, whatever, the maneuver just doesn't want to do that. So that's fine. Um, let's speed up and say sayonara to Kerbin. The Fission 5 lander is headed for the moon, or the mun, however you choose to pronounce it. Bye-bye. And here comes the moon in super speed. Whoa! -ho! And then once we get to about here... Let's switch to this view. Why are we targeted on this? We should be targeted on that. <laughs> that's, that's weird. Okay, so periapsis is at 45,000. I guess that's okay. I kind of, I may even expand it back up to 100, actually. So let's, uh, yeah, let's do that because I wanna have enough space to be able to maneuver around the individual landers. And we do have a lot of fuel. So I definitely have the fuel to burn to do that. We'll get right, yeah, just like that, into 100 by 100. And I'm actually, let's make it a little wonkier to give the various landers, instead of making it flat, let's make the orbit crazy like that. Because some of the, some of the landers need to land on the North Pole or the South Pole. And yeah, this might actually make it easier 
So let's do that, and then let's bring that down to 100. And that burn is going to take a minute 30. Lovely. And burn! There we go. Circularizing our orbit. Actually, we're not going to circularize it. It's going to be a little bit elliptical, and then once we get over to here... We will make it 100 by 100, so we have lots of room to look around for nice big craters to land in. And we've got a number of flags showing where we've been previously for science. And I think I'll land all the landers, just so I can easily, more easily keep track of uh, new places we still have to land. And then we will uh, fly them back to Carbon individually. Okay, we're in an orbit. Oh, okay. Camera's flying around like like craziness. It's coming on. I don't actually really need to watch it from there, so let's just watch it from here. Ah, isn't this peaceful? We have nice, relaxing music. <laughs> We've got nuclear engines trying their best to overheat. It seems like the nuclear engines are always sort of taunting us with their overheating, but they never really do it. They never really explode. And I feel a little disappointed in that, I think, sometimes. Like I've been lied to or tricked in some manner that I've put these nuclear fusion powerhouses on my rocket and not once have they exploded on me. Okay, now at the end here, let's watch from here. Shabunks! 100! Alright, good enough. Let's circularize. And then we will land. Orbit has been circularized at 100 kilometers, so it's time to disembark one of these landers and try to land on one of the craters. So just looking at it from this view, I see one, two, three, four. Uh, four big ones that we don't have any flags on. And it, once we get all four of those guys landed, then I'll look around for a fifth one. Maybe there's something on the dark side there. I can't quite see. And we're going to have to look over the staging once I disconnect this. And make sure everything is still lined up properly. So let's... No, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to observe the mystery goo. Decouple. There we go. So there he is with our... Way too many fuel tanks and engines. Let's switch to him with the bracket key. All right, he is separated. Very nice, yeah. So, um, well, I'll show you in a minute, but originally we've got the, the lander right here with its little engine right underneath the, the f get out of here, right underneath this fairing. And then we have a little extra tank with a little extra engine to help us decelerate right before we land so that I have as much fuel as possible to take off and get back to Kerbin. And then because of uh, the problems getting out to the moon, we also have this tank and this nuclear engine. So we have a lot of fuel. Uh, no, don't time warp. What am I doing? I'm trying to hit M, not the, uh, not the comma key. So let's see. From here, we've been to this one. I wonder, is it too late to land there? Let's try. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see how quickly our orbit decays if I switch to retrograde and just start burning. And if it doesn't look like we're going to get there in time, then uh, we'll just shoot past it and look for a different target. Okay, and burn. Oh, yeah, we can definitely do it. Yeah, this is going to be good. Very good. Okay, so we're going to kind of come in kind of steep, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe it'll be kind of shallow. Yeah, but we can definitely do it. So let's uh, let's land, or let's aim for this side of the crater. Because once we get to about here and we start burning retrograde, it's going to slow us down even more. We should land basically right in the center there. We're not going to run into the... Oh, where'd it go? Where's our friend? Oh, there he is. He's already three kilometers away. And we just basically, we need to stick on this retrograde marker here. We're heading for, I think, this one. 
So let's do, tell you what, let's do a quick save, just in case I really screw this up. And let's look over the stages. We've got this nuclear engine. Then we're going to blow off that and its fuel tank. Oh, we have this. Okay, let's, uh... Can I get rid of this? Or is it just kind of stuck there now? Yeah, I can't do anything with that. Okay, fine. Then we have the engine underneath there, then another blow off, then the engine for the actual lander. Okay, so everything looks to be in order. The parachute is up at the top where it's supposed to be. Let's speed up until we get a little bit lower, until around there. And I keep, I keep, I keep losing the view here. Okay, slow down. Slow down! Spin around. Let's get our resources out. Oh, running out of uh, electric. Oh no, why is the electric charge down there at the bottom? It's usually at the top, so I, I got worried for a second that we were losing it. Yeah, this is a kind of uh, cumbersome, this particular setup. So I may just like get rid of this guy so we can rotate a little faster. We will maybe, we'll burn off a little bit with this guy and then we'll drop it. Because who doesn't need more debris in their, in their interplanetary system? Okay, our electric charge is actually full, so let's put these away. Very nice. Coming in nicely. And I think I'll, I'll film the entire landing for the first one. And then for the second, third, fourth, and fifth, I'll just film the very end of it. So we can land, get some science, and then we'll uh, probably just take off from there with each one. Maybe film the first one getting all, all the way back to Kerbin. And then I'll just film the very end of the second, third, fourth, and fifth. So it's not too uh, repetitive. Here we go. Let's uh, speed up a little bit. It's going a little slow. Okay, right about there is good enough. Good. Let's start burning. See how quickly we can get rid of this speed. Pretty quickly. But I, I mainly want to... I want us decay our arc here so that we land somewhere around here. And then we definitely want to get rid of this tank. Who would have thought that I would completely over-engineer a, a rocket ship? <laughs> Okay, good, good. It's not quite decaying as much as I want. As long as we get somewhere in here, that'll be good. I probably should have... Uh, Whoop, okay, so that's the end of that. There's that. Whoa, sound effects! Okay, now we're shooting this one. Good. Maybe it's good that I had that extra bit of fuel. Maybe... No, well, actually, we're not going to need it. And this looks like we're far enough inside the crater to be in the, the quote-unquote biome. I'm going to try and land in this guy right here. This guy right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut that. And then uh, we're going to use that to decelerate when we get lower. I'm going to let it accelerate again. And then when we get lower, I'll use it to kill some of our speed. And then I'll drop it off before we land. Hopefully we don't land right on top of it. But that's highly unlikely. And let's see. Our, we're going to land in 1 minute, 20 seconds. So not too long. <clears throat> and I'll just let it keep accelerating for a bit. We're still kind of high up. We're going to be going down into the crater. <clears throat> How you doing, Lurry? You having fun, Lurry? Lurry Kerman, let's speed up. This is taking a little bit too long. I'm getting impatient. Okay, that's good. Oh, gosh. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, add some... Hopefully we didn't screw it up by waiting too long. No, we definitely did not. This is fine. And we're coming down almost straight. This guy is still a little hard to control, I have to say. Once we drop that tank, it'll get a little better. And 
let's go ahead and put the landing legs out. Kapunk! There we go. And once we get nice and low... So I, I'm just going to keep this engine on because I don't. we're going to drop it off anyway. Uh, once we get nice and low, we'll get rid of it. And I actually, I'm going to throttle down a little bit so we don't decelerate quite so fast. And if you've done a lot of landings, then you, you probably do it a little bit more aggressively. I'm still a little conservative with these landings. Okay, that's enough. Shut that off. And we're quite low, so let's go ahead and get rid of it. There we go. There we go. Don't land on that thing, though. Don't land on it. Oh, we have to we have to fire the engine too. That might help. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it exploded. Good. <laughs> I don't have to worry about running into it. That's the best of both. We haven't had anything explode the whole episode or the previous. Okay. And Oh gosh. No, no, you're tipping the wrong way. Oh gosh. Uh Okay. Phew. That was that's that's much better. Okay. Much better result there. And we have basically the whole tank left to get us back to Gerbin. Let's do an EVA first. Actually, no, no. Let's do that last cuz that's more exciting. Board. First, let's do some mystery goo. Hello, Mr. Magoo, Mr. Goo. Let's keep the data. We learned last time that we won't really know how much uh the, the amount of the science is diminishing until we get the reports and all the different, uh, all the, uh, the evidence and whatnot. We won't know until we get all the way back. Okay, stop shaking around. We won't know until we get all the way back to Gerben, but I'll go ahead and log it all anyway. Okay. Let's log some gravity data. 240, yeah. And I believe at least the first one will be definitely full value, and then the next ones will be less. Keep data. Log seismic data, 200. Okay, get out of here. Log seismic data, 200. Good, okay, so that's those six, or eight, I guess, with the mystery goo. Now, let's do an EVA. Let go. And put your jetpack on, run around. Do a little flyby. Let's do a little loop-de-loop -loop around our very minimal lander. But we took five of them at once, so maybe that's maybe that's better. <laughs> this is quite the small lander. I know people make them smaller than this even, but... Okay. So, here we go. And tell you what, let's go ahead and put a flag here to mark that we've landed in this crater. So I can keep track of where I've been and where I haven't been. There's going to be a lot of flags on this place. Plant flag. Shadoosh, Spladoosh. Site name. Um, what did I call this thing? Fission, oops, caps lock. Fission 5. Biome event thing. <laughs> okay, whatever. And then we can also do an EVA report. Lovely. Oh, people tell me that the, uh, let's see, let's look at that again. Review report. EVA report from the moon's southwest crater. Yeah, they were saying that it says the name of the biome in right here, southwest crater. That's where we are, southwest crater. Cool. And we will keep that and we'll also take a soil sample. So, a surface sample from the moon's southwest crater. The sample appears to be radioactive. That's fine. Lurie doesn't care. Keep that. Lander number two coming in hot. So we're on the we're on the dark side of the moon at present. It looks like the sun is just coming up, but there's a mountain there casting this whole crater in shadow, or maybe it's the crater edge, actually. I can't actually see very well how far down the ground is. It's really hard to see. 
We're gonna try to make a landing successful. Anyway, I'm going pretty slow, and we're just gonna take this conservatively. I tried to do one of these landings a little more aggressively. It didn't go so well. I crashed in, oh gosh, there's the ground. I can see it now. Okay, let's do this. Good. Okay, and just burn retrograde and keep, whoa, explosions, explosions. Keep it under five. We should be fine. There's the tank. Lovely. Smack. No, no, no. No, no. Don't tip over. Do not tip over. Okay, we did it. The sun is rising. You can see the shadow. And the, the bit over there is in sun. We're going to be in the sunlight soon. What biome are we in? Let's check. And what does Gene Wiggs say? We are in Moon's far side crater. Large concentrations of melted byproducts here. Some appear to be formed by intense pressures and heat. Thank you. And here's the EVA report. You start to say something dramatic and poignant about the plight of Kerbal Kind in this grand universe, only to be cut off by random radio chatter that the situation is nominal. Awesome. Lander number three coming in, and I had to use a little bit more fuel for this guy than previously because we had to manipulate the orbit so much to land way up here uh, on this the crater, way up on the, the top of the, the moon. We're coming in 3,000 meters, although we're not 3,000 meters from the surface. I don't know how high the surface is here. So we're just going to watch it and try to keep our velocity in check. Try to keep pointed right at that. Okay, let's speed up a little bit. Let's bleed it off. We're getting close. Try to try to keep our cursor there on the little nav ball, right on the the retrograde marker. Which is right now we're basically going straight down. Here we go. Coming in. Here we come. Just needs to be basically like under five ish. Here we go, we're... Too much! Too much! Take off! Take off! Okay, now find your retrograde quickly. Quickly, it's over here. And kill off that... Oh my gosh, what's going on? Why am I flying all different directions? What are you doing? What are you doing, Navball? Okay, but we haven't used that much fuel. That's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. Adventures in space time. Or, yeah, you know what I mean. Adventures in space exploration. Okay, here we go. Attempt number two. Try not to screw this one up, buddy. Oh, you just... Okay, okay. Carefully. Just don't come in too hot. I'm... There. Sit down, please. Pow, pow. Stand up. Okay, lovely. Get out of there, Seaford. Let go. And let's see what this place is called. Oh, and just <laughs> smash. Smash your face right on that ground. Get up. Because Mickey loves you. EVA report. EVA report from the moon's polar crater. You start to say something. Okay, that's the same flavor text. Surface sample. Intense shock patterns. Okay. Let's move on to lander number four. And lander number four, Hadbury, coming in to yet another crater that we have yet to explore. And looks like I'm going to have a little bit of extra fuel on this one, so let's just keep this extra fuel tank. Let's just keep it going, slowing us down very slowly. Every time I try to come in more aggressively, I screw it up royally. Maybe I should try that with a, uh, a lander with more, more engines and more thrust or something so we can slow down faster. Maybe that'll be a, like a fun challenge. See how low to the ground we can start slowing down. And we're about to run out of fuel. Okay, let's just do that. Get rid of that. Okay, stop. Stop! Here we come. Here we come. Looks like this area isn't quite as hilly as some of the others I've had to land in either. Just keep that thro that uh, not the throttle, but keep that surface speed low, under five. 
Should be good. Yeah, okay, that's that's doing pretty good right there. We're gonna slow down. Look at this, look at this landing. Oh, perfect. Almost. And plop. Pretty good, that was the best one yet, the most controlled anyway. Let's pop out, let's see, oops, wrong button. Left click, don't right click. Let's get an EVA with Hadberry. And, oh, okay, you already fell off, fine. I have a ladder here, I have yet to actually need to use the thing. Let's <laughs> waddle over here. Okay, Hadberry. Uh, actually, where's our light? Let's put you in the light. There we go, that's a little better. Ha ha, <laughs> he's having a blast. Okay, where are we? EVA report. The moon's northwest crater. You start to say something dramatic. Okay, same flavor text. Surface sample. The ground materials appear to be a combination of basaltic rocks and brescia. That's, well, maybe you would say that if it was, uh, anyway, breccia. If it was Italian, it would be brescia. Anyway, let's keep that. We will plant a flag, and I think what I'll do is I will save the fifth lander for next episode, and then we will take off with all five, take them all the way back to Kerbin, and see how much science we got from this mission. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.